So I just thought I'd share a very quick tutorial on one of the new features in the new DaVinci Resolve 18 beta. And that is the surface tracker, which essentially gives us the power mesh of Mocha Pro or the same functionality as Lockdown, the paid plugin. This is really cool because it's gonna allow us to do some more advanced tracking within Resolve without relying on third party plugins. So the first thing to note is I'm using DaVinci Resolve 18 public beta. So this is where the, you're gonna find the new surface tracker tool. So I've clipped down my uh, footage and I'm going to click on the color tab. And then I'm going to search for surface tracker here and I'm going to drag it over and plug my footage into it. And then that into the output. Now the first page you're going to see is the bounds page. Let's just remove that for a sec so we can see better. So this bounds page is where you start drawing the shape of um, what you want to track. So the best thing to do, as with all mesh tracking, is to go to the frame where your graphic is going to be undistorted. So probably for me that would be around here. And I'm just going to start drawing the boundary of where I want to track here. So in this case it's the face. Just like that. And you want to draw up to and including where your graphic is going to be. So. I'm going to draw that out like that. Then once you've done that, you can switch to the mesh tab and it will automatically generate a mesh for you. And this is the um, mesh that it's going to track. Now you can change the locations to automatic or you can go to uniform grid and it'll just put the points everywhere. But generally automatic is better because it will choose key features for distortion. You can change the point number limit here to uh, limit the number of points. So the higher this goes, the more points it's going to track, but obviously the longer it's going to take. And then you've got minimum point spacing, and this will just um, stop points from getting bunched together too much. So once that's done, we can click on the track tab, and we've got our tracking controls here. There's motion range, and if we hover over this, it tells us that the this is how far it's going to search for matches, so how many frames ahead and behind it's going to look for similarity. And also mesh rigidity, which is how uh, so stable the mesh is going to be. I'm going to set the quality to better instead of faster and then I'm just going to hit track forwards and let that track to the end. So once that's done I'm just going to drag it back to um, and check the track and that's looking pretty good so far. Now if you click on this button it'll go to the start of the range that you've tracked so it's quite useful because now I know that I've tracked from here to here and now I'm just going to click track backwards as well. And so now the tracking is complete, I'm just going to scrub through and have a look at what we've got. And I must say I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the track. As you can see it's really sort of moving with every sort of movement of the face sticking really well. The next step would be to drag our graphic that we want to composite over onto the um, node window. So in my case I've chosen this sort of tattoo shape here. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it into the input, the green here. So green to green in the surface tracker. And you can see immediately that that is now tracked onto the face and it's warping along with the face movements. Now obviously the positioning is wrong. So what you want to do next is click on result. And we can choose warp input 2 onto 1. And that will that's the default and that will warp our image over. But there's also some other um, things. We can do warp input 1's alpha. Um, we can warp onto blank, so that will just give us our graphic on a black background. But in our case, we want to leave it as the default. So then under overlay placement, I'm going to click the drop down here and I'm going to set it to sliders. Just there. And then with these sliders, you can drag around your or image to where you want it to be. So in my case, I'm going to move it here, kind of shrink it down a bit. And just move that into place. So once you're happy with the positioning, just another thing you're going to need to do is to grab the alpha channel, which is this top one of the input graphic, and drag it into the alpha channel of the input of the surface tracker here. And there we go, you'll see that that now uses the transparency of the image. The very last thing you can do is the compositing drop down here you can change how that's blending so you could change it to multiply and then maybe turn the opacity down a bit 
and that already looks quite convincing that that is stuck to the face there. As you can see, if I zoom in, it's moving really well with the tiny little movements of the face. The graphic is being warped really nicely there. There are also a couple of settings you can play around with here. You've got expand and contract, so you can shrink down the graphic or you can turn up the softness of the graphic um, to help it blend better. Um, and then under interaction overlays, if you click on hide, that will just give you the final result. And the playback speed is incredible. So no caching, that's playing back in real time which is fantastic for seeing the output of your results. And of course, it's as easy as anything to just grab your gallery, uh, media pool even, and you can drag on different assets, whatever you want, and, and switch them out with other things to see what they look like. So the real question is, what if you want to get this into Fusion? Because you may want to come in here and do some roto work on the eyes so that um, it's not overlapping the eyes and perhaps the inner part of the mouth as well. So to get this out into Fusion, I would do the following. So click on your surface tracker and under result, just choose warp input to onto blank. And that will take the, the graphic and it will just warp it over a black background. So once you've got that, um, you can go to deliver and just save it as a video file. So I'm gonna add it to the render queue and render it out. Once that's done, go back to the color tab and grab the alpha of the surface tracker and drag that into the output and then render that out as well. So you've got the image with the RGB and then you've got a black and white image, which is just the alpha channel. So add that to the render queue and render. And so now if you come back to Fusion, we can import those files that we've just exported and we can grab the output there from the color tab. You can see that that's our warped graphic and we can just merge that over the footage like that and then drag the alpha that we exported, drag that into the mask input and then on the settings change the channel to red, green, blue, just anything other than the alpha channel because there is no alpha channel here, it's just black and white. So those channels will be used as the mask and then you'll see that that is now rendering in fusion over our graphic and we can come in here and we can make changes to it um, so on the merge node you just want to remember to make sure you set your apply mode to multiply again like it was in the color tab and then you can turn the gain down or do whatever else you want with this graphic in fusion so hopefully you found that useful and will be able to use it in your projects going forward Stay tuned for more tutorials on some of the new features coming in DaVinci Resolve 18.